thanks for staying with us. Uterine leomyoma is commonly called fibroids is the commonest tumor of the female pelvic organ. There are benign tumors of uterine myometrium composing of smooth muscle with variable amounts of connective tissue and common gynecological gynecological problem among women of reproductive age. According to scientific research, uterine fibers accounted for 6.4% of all gynecological admissions and 21.3% of all major gynecological surgeries. The tumor was found to be common between the age range 30 to 39, which makes up for 7.5%, yes, uh, followed by 20 to 29, which is 26.3%, and 40 to 49 years old, which makes up 15.7%. Although the precise cause of leomyoma is unknown, advances have been made in understanding of the hormonal factors, um, genetic factors, growth factors, and molecular biology of these benign tumors. So today, we're asking what are some of the myth, the myth and um, truths of uterine fibroids. Please listen to what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. You could also tweet at us at WayshowAfrica1 with the hashtag we show. So before we bring in the experts on the topic, Jennifer, what do you know about fibroids? Nothing. Nothing. I've always heard about um, fibroid, mm. right? And mm. one of the myths that I've heard is if you have fibroid, you will be unable to ha um, get pregnant, yeah. right? Yeah. And I know that um, there are lots of women out there who couldn't get married. Mm or men didn't want to get married to them because they had, mm. they had fibroid. So, I mean, you're looking for a child. So if the myth was true, mm. then it means that if you get married to this certain woman, there is a high chance that you will never have a child. I, that's, that's the same thing for me. That's what I, the girl growing up, that's what I see here, because I know we had a couple of my mom's friends, yeah. family and all that, and they would say, oh, she couldn't have a baby because she had fibroid. Then there used to be this person that had like a protruded tell me right <laughs> and i used to hear them have co adult conversations then when they say oh she has fibroid and you know something like that. but thank god that we have an expert in our miss but then you see what do you know about fibroids oh i've experienced it right. my friend actually had a fibroid and she had it removed because mm. the doctor didn't give her any other option and that's the reason one of the questions I would love to ask our experts uh, tonight to know when is it the only option you have mm. to get it out? Is it to get it out? Do you have to have some sort of um, invasion for you to get the fiber out, or there is a way you can actually survive with it and you know, have it strong? Thankfully, we have we have an expert in our midst today who is going to answer all our burning questions and then quench all these myths that we have about fibroids. So, Dr. Benjamin is a brilliant, resourceful, self-motivated, and passionate graduate of the prestigious College of Medicine, University of Lagos. He's a detailed physician with postgraduate training in family medicine from the National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria with special interest in maternal and child health. He's a skilled surgeon with over 15 years experience who has worked successfully in several communities in West Africa. Under his foundation, Benjamin Olojebutu Foundation, BOF, over 10,000 free surgeries have been performed in 17 states in Nigeria for folks suffering from fibroids, hernias, lipomas, and breast lumps. He's the medical director and CEO to an ex-medical center and also the executive director and lead surgeon of the BOF, which is www.bof.org.ng love team. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, you mm. So you ladies. <laughs> You're a big lady. I'm a big girl. How's it going? Very well, thank you. Do you know, anytime I see doctors or surgeons in real time, like when they're not in the hospital and doing their thing, it fascinates me a whole lot because I'm like, how are you that same person that gets into character with your scrubs and whatnot and opening people up and doing things like that? But yeah, thank you for well, that's, that's our job to save lives, basically. Yeah, so I'm glad you're talking about this very important issue for women, and I think it's, um, it's very, very great that ladies are talking about, you know, because mm. I think it's been a lot of issues in the last few years that people don't talk about it. They're very afraid, yeah. they're very shy to, yeah. to speak up. You see a woman carrying a lot of big tummy because she's very shy, they call her yeah, bitchy, they mm. call her mama, jima, mm. and stuff like that. So she doesn't come out to tell you what she's going through. But now that a lot of ladies are talking about it, I'm happy. 
and we're getting more more traction where people are coming out to ask for help and they're yeah. saying, oh, can you help me? And they can get, they're getting help um, now. So it's the part we're talking about. Mm. Mm. Okay, um, I would let Isi go first because Isi had already started asking her question, her question already. So, Isi... Maybe you should give a Bible first so when people mm. understand what we're saying. Um, I think people think that fibroid is cancerous. So we need, mm. we need, we need to first sort that out. Fibroids are benign tumors that grow in the uterus, you know, in the, in the womb of a woman. So only women can have fibroid. A man cannot have because only women have uteruses. Mm. You know, so, so it's on the womb. So it's benign. Yeah. It's not cancerous. cancerous. So it doesn't metastasize. It doesn't go to every other part of the body. So it's localized in the womb. Mm. And there are several symptoms we're going to get to that point. But one of the things I realized in, this, in, the, in my research or in my work in the last few years is is about the size of the fibroid and the position mm. of the fibroid. You know, so the size obviously you know can be it can be can be as big as, a, as as two basketball, as three basketball, as four basketball sometimes. You know, and it can be it can be several pushing up so uh, pushing up part of the uterus can cause severe pain, severe bleeding. You see women bleeding for two weeks, for a month, for two months sometimes because of the fibroid. It can be very very devastating sometimes. I mean, so I was actually going to come to some of the myths that um, people out that we've heard, yeah. you know, about fibroids. But then again, let me allow Isi ask her question first before I come to that. Thank okay. you. Isi, go ahead. Hi, thank you, uh, Dr. Benjamin. I, I'm happy about the fact that you stated that the size of the fibroid is the determinant for you to know what to do. Now, in terms of non surgical procedures, is there, a, is there something you can do in terms of shrinking the fibroid? I, I, she wasn't very clear. Can you yeah, um, so she's asking in terms of surgical procedures, is there something that, it, that can be done in shrinking the fibroid? Okay, so that's another myth. So that, let, let, me, let me go to the first myth I've read a couple of years. So somebody tells you that you can take your medicines, have all medicines, that can shrink the fibroid and make you pass it out like, mm -hmm. like a poo. Or like you could deliver it like a baby, big myth. So I like to describe a fiber so you can picture it in your mind. So you look at you, you look at the coconut. Mm -hmm. you see the back of the coconut, mm. the shell of the coconut. Yeah. Yeah. That's how very hard the fiber it is. Mm. It's very hard. Is 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 it? I, I call it monster. It's a tumor. It's, it's mm. that hard. Mm. So imagine you're taking a medicine through your mouth, and someone says that medicine will shrink that kind of coconut that is very hard mm -hmm. and make you water. And you're going to pass it out. It's all fallacy. It doesn't work. So they work on their psyche, on their pain, mm -hmm. work on their fear, and give them things that don't work. So they waste all their money. Yeah. And most times, these things that drink, I've heard women go to, go as far as go to Kuton to buy an herbal medicine made with the with the, with the feces of cow, a cow from cow dung, and she's drank it for a couple yeah. of years. You know, I've, I've heard about women trying to. Um, they use um, sand with um, some kind of leaves to make herbal medicines. And I tell them if you take three spoons every day, it's going to shrink the fiber. And they're still there. Fiber is getting bigger every day. Mm -hmm. So this myth needs to be um, averse today and just, just, just given the truth. When there's a fiber in the body, if it is affecting you and affecting your daily life, the answer to taking it out is surgery. But if it is not affecting you and it's very small, most times it's just lifestyle changes yeah. that will help you not to make it aggravate the growth. Mm. But there's no drug you will take, from my experience, that will shrink a fiber. That's a big lie. That's a big fallacy. Okay, so that brings me to, my next, to the next question. Right? Um, so what are some of the lifestyle um, experiences that one might be partaking in that can aggravate the growth of the fiber? So, so researchers are saying that people that take a lot of red meat, um, people that take, that take a lot of pastries, people that take a lot of fibers, food, so people diet. that take a lot of diet, yes, mm. very importantly, exercise sometimes. Mm. Uh, people say things like um, uh, people that, um, that have not been pregnant for a while, so let me tell you that particular one. So that is from my experience. I'll explain to you why. Our parents they have fiber, you know what they have? They have multiple children. Okay. And they them very early. So look at it, look at it for you. You, uh, you started menstruating at maybe nine years old or mm -hmm. ten. And our, or maybe our mother started at ten. By eighteen, they have their first ch first, ch first child, and maybe they're like five. Anytime you're pregnant, 
You don't menstruate. So your, the hormone that stimulates the fiber to growth, to grow, are not working. The estrogen hormone. Mm. I get to my point. Yeah, so yeah. you have one year of keeping the baby in your tummy. And you, now have, another, you have another one year of, what, of, of breastfeeding the baby. I get to me. Mm. At that point, there are no fibers. Because why? The hormones that help the fiber to grow is rest at that particular because there's a baby in the womb. So, so imagine you having five children. How many years are going to, are going to, are going to be measuring mes 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 uh, free? So, two years, two years, two years, two years. That's ten years. Yeah. That's a lot of our parents they have fibroid. But what happens now? A lot of ladies, they are 40. Yeah. They start menstruating when they were like 10. Mm -hmm. So, they've been bleeding all their life for 30 years. There's been no break. Because scientists say that nature abhors vacuum. Mm -hmm. Something must grow in that womb. And the oestrogen hormone will stimulate fiber to grow in the womb. Now the fiber will grow. Right. Okay. I think now. Does, I... that, make, does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, 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 so the later the the, 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 the the later you don't use the womb for what is meant to be, mm -hmm. something will grow in the womb. Yes. yes. That's where it is. Hmm. Okay. Does it make sense to you? It does. Good. It's just. It's a lot to take. It's a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I like to make it very, very easy. People understand it. So that's like, I give this kind of example. So yeah. you get it. It's very easy to understand. You can understand what's happening to you. Yeah. So you can see that um, the fiber also has a growth pattern. It grows, you know, because every day you feed on the, you eat food, mm -hmm. you feed on the fiber. Mm. It's, it, has, it has very, very large uterine arteries that, like a baby in the, in the womb, as you eat the food, is what the baby eats. It's so the same way. Wow. As we eat food is what the fiber eats and it keeps growing as you know, okay. because it takes in the nutrient and it gives you what you don't what it gives you it takes all most of the nutrient and gives you a small, small part to the body. You see, so you see the women very, very, very they're not very fine, they're very, very um cachectic, they're very anemic, they feel very sad because they, they, they are very low service because mm. they can't wear the, they can't wear what they want to wear, they look very, very gloomy. Why? Because the fiber is growing day and night. So, um, for a woman who has um, removed fibroid before, what are the chances or what's the probability of it coming back? So, I say it this way. If you take out the fibroid and you get pregnant, when you get pregnant, it doesn't come back again. But as a good have a call, we call it their propensity of, of, of family history of fibroid growth, which means you know, their family, maybe their auntie had it or their mother had it. So, those ones who have propensity to have fiber, it's genetic for them, mm. so they can have it again. And if some of them, and the studies were done, and not all the fibers were taken away, and maybe some seeds were left, those seeds can grow again. So, it, so it depends on those, those parameters that can make it grow. But I actually advise, take out the fiber when you get pregnant, because the womb is now being occupied by what it should occupy it, like a baby, the fiber will not grow again. You get my point? Mm. Most times people don't understand that when they take out the fiber surgery, and do any fiber surgery, they should get pregnant. And sometimes I realize in my practice also that most men don't support their wife awesomely. Mm. When they have fiber, they think it's just why they have issue with, with making babies. But most I realize that they also have hormonal factor infertility. Some of them are very low sperm count. Some of them have put their phones in their pocket for a long time. Mm. They put their laptop on their legs for a long time. They wear very tight jeans for a long time. So there's a lot of reduction in the production of proper, concentrated good sperm, and they cannot make babies. But most of them don't know, or because they don't get tested. Mm -hmm. They think it's about the woman just having the fiber, fiber that is causing the problem. So I usually advise, when you have fibroids, it must be it must be a fellowship. Mm. The wife and the husband must come together and seek help so that they can get this. Yeah. All right. To, to, to spell it out for our audience who are, um, who are watching, right? So aside getting pregnant, which is one of the major mm. <laughs> ways to avoid having um, fiber, that's if it's not genetic for you, right? Um, what are the things that we can do as women to prevent that from happening aside so, getting pregnant? So as I said, yeah, lifestyle, lifestyle. So uh, reduce your red meat intake, reduce your bread, reduce your pastries, reduce, um, do a lot of, you know, make sure you're, you're active, mm. exercise-wise, you don't add a lot of weight. You know, if you do those things, you should be, you should be fine. 
So what are the symptoms? What do we look out for? Oh, good. I like, I, I like to talk about this. So, so as a part of you know, the symptoms are very, very, symptoms can, they can be very devastating from um, painful menstruation, which we call dysmenorrhea. Mm -hmm. Some people take a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of analgesics when they are menstruating, yeah. you know, because they cannot do without a lot of pain. Yeah. Some are called menorrhagia, which mm -hmm. is increasing flow. So, so for example, like you're menstruating for like four days before, sweet four days and you're fine. Now it's going to seven days, mm. it's going to eight days, nine days, with every clot and part of it. Mm. So you're like using two or three parts on a day, you now use adult pampers because you can't take in the blood anymore. Mm. You know? That's one of the menorrhagia. Then, then you have what we call painful, painful sex. So people make love to their husband and there's pain. Why? Because some of the fibroids are close to the cervix. So mm. as, as lovemaking is happening, the, the husband is actually eating okay. on the fibroids, you know. And you see people having what we call, they used to wear size 8 before, and suddenly it becomes size 12, because mm. the time is getting bigger. Some think it's a bar, but they think it's for food. Mm. But most of the time it's the fibroid growing. Mm. So you see, that, you see that increase in abdominal size mm. is part of the things you look out. So talking about increase in abdominal size, so what you're trying to say is that um, you can have fibroid without having that pain, or having painful sex or correct, anything like yes, that. Yes, so you can yes. actually be living with a big yes, stomach yes. and you wouldn't know that you Very have correct. fibroid. Because of the because also of, of, of the position. So you have intramural fibroids, you have sort mucous fibroids, you have um, um sub serous fibroids, you also have pedonclitic fibroids, you also have um, cervical fibroids. So it depends on the position. So with the position comes with the pain. If you have a fibroid on top of the uterus, which is what we call pedonclitic fibroid. Most you will see for women is all called habitual miscarriages. Mm. So you have a big basketball on a small uterus that's carrying a baby. baby so yeah. think about um, a bean seed or a bean seed or a granite and trying to grow. And there's a big mass that is a little basketball on top of it. Mm. What happens? Okay. It will it's crush it. The so the more, the, more the, the more the baby, baby tries to grow, the miscarry. Yeah. But I'm, they might not have pay for menstruation. But why? Because the, the fire body is just on top of the uterus. Okay. But it will cause abortion. So sometimes... You don't, have, you don't have all the phrase of the, of, of the symptoms. It might as well warn that it's very, very severe and very, very devastating. Mm. Thank you so much, Dr. Benny, for sharing your expertise. But before we continue, let's take a short break. And when we come back, we'll continue the conversation. If you're just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, you train fibers, the myth and the truth with Dr. Benjamin Oluwatosinu Jebutin. Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818038463. You could also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. So let's come back now to some of the myths, the popular myths that we've we've heard. I mean, we've addressed some of them already. Um, Isi talked about, or rather asked if surgeries, if, it, if surgeries were the only solutions. We've heard how they said go to Kotonu and, you know, drink whatever it is that is drinkable from there. And you dispel this bit saying that this is not possible. But then there's one other one that I've also heard, a very popular one. I, I'm, I mean, so speaking from my common sense, I know that that's not remotely possible, mm -hmm. right? But then I know that there are some people who still sort of believe that it's possible. And then it is that um, fibroids are contagious. Mm. Mm. So <laughs> what's the reality? What's the reality <laughs> with this? No, that's not true. That's a big lie. Mm. And it's one of the things that um, the other guys always sell to the people yeah. to make money off them. So it's about emotional blackmail, psychological um, infringement, just tell them things they want to hear, just take money off them. So fibroid is never contagious. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a contact disease. Mm. It grows within the womb of a woman. So how, how, will, you, how will you contact it if, if with how it just transfers to the next person? It's not possible. It's just a big, a big fallacy as a, and it, as a myth. And I'm, I'm glad you're talking about it today because people need to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. They need to understand that, man, there is no, fiber does not transfer. Yeah. I'll tell you a story. So I was in Calabar years ago and somebody told me clearly that um, um, somebody showed the fiber to her that um, I met, her father married another woman and the man didn't like the mother. And <laughs> when she was coming from the, from the river, and she just saw her, saw her on the road, and she, and she smiled at her sheepishly, and the next day she started having fibroids. I'm saying, oh, God, that's not... Village <laughs> people. That's not... You know. <laughs> and, you know, and, 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 and it, it took off to, to change their mind and say, no, 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 you just, you just need to get some of Nobody throws fibroids at you. Mm -hmm. it, um, it, there, there are systems to it. Even though we don't know the cost of fibroids, there are 
Please put some factors for fiber, which I've said some of them before. Is in your family. You are you, you have you have you, you love ladies now use a lot of contraceptives, mm -hmm. which makes the hormone very very available in the body to grow the fibroids. You know it's genetic. You know it's um, people people that are based people that are fat they are propensity of having fibroids too. Those are the risk facts, risk factors. Well, but we don't know where we don't know the risks. The, we don't know the cause already we don't know but research are going to get there very soon to know what's actually causing this fiber and it's also very peculiar to black women right yeah. black africans yeah. black yeah. americans yeah, black hispanics so you know and we don't know why that is mm -hmm. but there's about our genetic that makes it very common in this country you know and and you know we hope that one day we find the cause of it from the beginning no, and we can see. leave it to the board yeah, very, yeah. very true. I mean, so another one would be that it is sexually transmitted, uh, but you've already debunked uh, that, so that's not, <laughs> that's yeah, not no. correct, right? But then these are some of the myths that we've heard from people saying yeah. that, oh, it can be, it can be, um, it's contagious, yeah, and then it can also be sexually no, transmitted. Okay, so Dr. Menem said that's not true, that's please, not you true guys. Problem, yeah. It's not, it's not possible. It's not, it's not PID. It's not, um, <laughs> I it's know, right? right? Yeah. It's not, and it's not STD. The things that are transmissible are STDs. A UTI, so PID. So for, for fibroid, it's a disease of the womb itself. So it's not transmissible. It's not transferable by sex or by anything. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay. You see, are there any other popular myths you've heard that you would like um, Dr. Benjamin to address? Absolutely, I do. And it is a myth that says that fibroid disappears after menopause. Can he throw light on this, please? Okay, I like to, I like to answer that. So she said, fiber di disappears after menopause. Mm, yes. Good. So if the fibroid was not symptomatic, which means you didn't have heavy bleeding, you didn't have big tummy, you had very small fibroid that that's not worrisome, and when you come in the postal, it just goes because the hormone that stimulates the fiber to grow or make you menstruate, mm. it's no more working because you're not menopausal. So mm. you, you won't find the symptoms oh. anymore. Mm. But imagine before you got menopausal, you've had a big tummy. You've had very severe uh, menstrual flow. You have, you have, you have very, very bad pain during menstrual flow. Mm. Even while you are menopausal in court in your age, because those muscles are still available in the tummy, you continue to bleed like that. I've seen women that are 56, that they're supposed to be menopausal, but they're still having, very, they're still having fibroids with this very, very heavy bleeding with clots. Why? Because... Before they became that age, they had the fiber before, and it has grown bigger. And they've taking a lot of herbal medicines, they would think it would be shrinking, but those herbal those, 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 those medicines have made fiber grow bigger. And they've crossed the age, they shouldn't should be bleeding, but they're still bleeding because mm -hmm. of the symptom mm -hmm. of the fiber and the mass. That's it. Mm. Okay. Isi, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. But I have one more question, though. Please go ahead. I'm with you. Yes, go ahead. Yes, please go ahead. Okay, fantastic. Now, another question is, all fibroids be treated? All fibroids, irrespective of the type of fibroid it is, should all fibroids be treated? I get that one. Can you help me? Yeah, she's asking if all fibroids can be treated. Yes. So, all fibroids that are symptomatic must be treated. Mm. So some are fibroids that are very small, no symptoms, they are very, they're chilling, they can wear their bikini clothes, they can wear their nice gowns, they have very good service team, no issues, no bleeding, they have no pain, that's all right. But when it becomes symptomatic and begins to affect the quality of your life, you know, some women cannot climb stairs, staircase, one, one step staircase because they are bleeding very, very heavily because when they're menstruating, they're, the blood literally just, just drops on the bathroom, mm. the bathroom, and just, they're like, they're like pouring water, like a tap just opens. Mm. I've seen women like that severally. So, by, by them walking on the staircase, they're panting. They, are, they have what was severe anemia. Let me now shock you one thing I realized in the last few years. Because of the size of the fiber, some women have, and I will call acute renal failure. Why? Because the fibers are so big, they now rest on ureters. Ureters are the organs that take urine mm. from the kidneys to the bladder. Mm. So you can pop here. Yeah. But because they're now big, then the mass, they now rest on those ureters. Instead of the urine coming down from the, from, the, from the kidney down to the bladder, they now go back up because a lot of them, because of the mass, the pressure on the ureter, mm -hmm. they now go back up and overall call severe hydronephrosis, hydro, water in the 
kidney. So urine, and urine is going back and we call, we call reflux. So you now see the urine swelling. You see, people, you see women having a lot of back pain, loin pain because of the fibroid. If they don't take out that man that is blocking the uterus, they blocking the uterine, um, ureter, what happens? The kidney begins to fail because mm. it will be overworking mm -hmm. and, there's, and the, the blood there and the urine there is not coming down to the bladder to be to, to, to mm. clear. So you have, when you take out the fibroids, and their kidney just begins to function normally again. Mm. Okay, so at what point is hysterectomy the only option? So, if the fibroid is very, 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 very bad, and the woman has stopped giving birth to children, and doesn't need the womb again, take out, take out the womb, with her permission. Mm. That's it. But if the man wants to beg children, um, still young, you do your me. That's what I. That's what you. I would usually advise. You know, and or if a man has gotten to a point of menopause, you're over fifty, you're over fifty-seven. What are you still doing with your womb? Mm. Except you want to do an IVF, or you want to have a miracle child like um, Mary, the mother of Jesus. You know, what's, what's the womb still doing there? You know, but you almost a lot of women are very, very particular and very warm with your womb. They don't want to out. They're very particular. Like, oh, I want to die. Oh, I want to mm -hmm. die. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> you know, so yeah. you just do what you have to do. Just educate them properly. And allow them to make what we call informed decisions mm -hmm. by yeah. themselves and their husbands and their family. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I would also want to know, I don't know, I don't know if you, I'm not sure if you touched on that already. Um, so is it possible for a woman living with fibroids to actually have kids? Yeah, a couple of them. I've, done, I've seen a couple of them. More, more, than, more than 20, more than 50. Right. So it's a position, as I said. So if the, if the fibroid is outside the womb is very small, some have like, um, like a, like um, um, maybe a size of a, of, of a melon, mm -hmm. so that of an orange. But when they get pregnant, as the baby is growing, the fibroid is also growing. growing. So. But sometimes we have very, very fantastic ad housing babies that say, no, you're not going to kill I'm me. Going to be here. I'm going to be here. I'm going to survive. I'm going to be here. So by, by the time I get to the, about the second to the third trimester, they outgrow the fibroid. So they fight out the fibroid. So they are, the baby grow bigger and the fibroid just, just, just they, doesn't grow as big as the baby. So they have babies and they deliver. Sometimes you now have to put them on bed rest for a couple of, couple of weeks so they don't, have, they don't have any abortion. Mm -hmm. yeah, they, don't, they don't lose the baby. So talking about that, right, just piggybacking off of that, I've heard of a case where the lady stopped um, menstruating and she felt like she had lost the period or um, that she she wasn't menstruating, so she, she felt she was pregnant, pregnant. Mm -hmm. right? And then her tummy started getting big. It was when she finally got to the hospital, I think after some months, and they found out that, oh, it's not a baby. You actually have, um, you actually have fiber. So I, I also say a few things today, um, ladies, that... Um, we need a lot of help from our traditional rulers, our um, religious leaders also. And also, there are some people around that are giving people some kind of injections mm. that, that they give them what we call pseudo-pregnancy. You, you know, there are some injections that you can give you. Or tell me start going big, the hormonal injections. They make you think you're pregnant. It's very psychological. Also, people say that what is in your womb is not, is not a fiber, it's a baby, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe they will say they won't pass the one imam or one one father right. told them about it, mm. you know, and they don't get help on time. Maybe maybe your friend fell into that kind of position, it's not you know. My it's, friend, it's all the lady, the lady, the lady you talked about. But for me, it's about also having them also help us um, educate people about this very very important challenge we have, you know. But but my joy is that you know, people are listening to a lot of ladies talking about. It. When ladies talk about these things, it is it's very very powerful because you guys are very powerful people. You know, and I like what Hillary Clinton said in, in 1996 about women, that when you, when, when you treat a woman, you treat a nation. Mm -hmm. So you, are, you guys are the, you are the you are parents, you are mothers, you are the one that give back to all of us. So you give back to the nation. So for us, we must have dedicated people talking and thinking and planning and practicing women's health in this country. Mm. Okay, uh, so now let's come, let's come to what you're doing with your foundation. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, do you want to share? Okay, share I, I, I want to share, share. So I had an accident in 2016. Mm. I was on my way home from work and this drunken driver ran into my car and broke my right leg in three places. Mm. Um, I was rushed to a big hospital in Lagos and I was left on the floor for five hours. Nobody attended to me as a doctor. I was about to die and 
in that quagmire, in that pain, in that, um, you know, I lost my blood, I was, I was already that, I was in a trance. And in that trance, I had a very, very strong inspiration to turn my pain to passion and help me in Africa, you know, in Nigeria, and just solve this problem. That if I was a peasant farmer, I didn't know anybody as a doctor, I'd have been dead. But because you know, God, God wanted me to live a life of purpose to help people in Africa and, and Nigeria, and, and I started doing these things for women in Africa, you know. So we've been to 17 states in Nigeria, um, from the north to the south, to the west to the east, we've been to Castina, Darai Castina, we've been to we've been to Bauchi, we've been to everywhere. And we go there by our, by, by, by our small resources to help women to solve, solve this problem. For me, in the last few years, we have, I call it the two Fs that affects women having fiber, two Fs, mm -hmm. fear and fun. Mm -hmm. So what our foundation has done is to, is to give faith and also help them with free surgery. So it's the F, the two Fs are what we're trying to solve. Yeah. Fear is to give them faith, you're going to be okay, you won't die, you're going to be fine, we're going to sort you out. Then the F is fun, because we're expensive doing the surgery. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know the, the cost on the island, you run away, mm -hmm. you know, on the mainland sometimes. So what, what our foundation has done is to take this healthcare Make universal to the rural communities in Nigeria mm. where there are no access to healthcare, mm. where there are no doctors. We go there with our team from Lagos, we go to a rural community and do studies for them for free and give them medications. And it's been very, very heartwarming seeing women that have we've, we've helped over 10,000 of them in Nigeria. Their prayers are enormous, the joy is uh, it's amazing, the grace is just sufficient for us. And God has been giving us. Great testimonies. Mm, that's pretty commendable. Well done, Dr. Benjamin. Thank that's you, Jenny. Jenny. I think we have, we have a comment, Jenny. Yeah, so I have a question here that says, um, fibroids are well known for women. Your guest made mention of the size and the position of the fibroid, which is true. I am not a woman, but thank God I am able to know that fibroids are not contagious. It only grows in the womb of women. It would be advisable to create awareness for women to avoid eating foods that will cause fibroids to maintain a good health. If a woman has fibroid, it is proper and advisable to voice out instead of hiding it because hiding it will only complicate matters and not solve the problem. God will help women to take care of themselves mm -hmm. and live long and well. Good evening, my dear beautiful sisters of what are you saying, Waze? <laughs> my name is Daniel Ilo, Waze regular fan. Thank Hi, you Daniel. Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Great, great comments. I like that. Yeah. So, so we need to retrieve those kind of comments and make it very, very viral mm. because... Let me start speaking up for women. Mm. I think I'm glad it's happening now. In the past few years, it wasn't like this. People, mm. people are very shy to talk say their favorite. They were talking their tummy. Yeah. They were very, very, very they were, what, do you guys, what do you guys call mm. that thing that you wear? Get waist trainer. Get the waist trainer. They would do the stuff <laughs> myself. I'm a baby. I said, no, you can't, you can't even breathe. You can't even eat, you know. And they come and see me. And when they take out that, they say, poop. I say, wow. So you're keeping this in, in this, in this garden, you know. I'm glad they're talking about it, so. Thank you so much, Dr. <laughs> Benjamin, for dispelling this myth and providing us with accurate information tonight. Your insights have been truly enlightening. We appreciate it. And we should actually talk about this more and talk about women's reproductive health a lot more often and bring the awareness to people who don't know already. Um, it was great having you on the show. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Isi, for joining us virtually as well. Before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. Remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. It's been an insightful. You need to even share this with your friends for them to go back and watch again. All the women you know in your life. But then if you miss today's quote, here it is again. Communities and countries and ultimately the world are only as strong as the health of their women. And this is by Mitchell Obama. See you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Good night. <laughs>